Welcome to the EV Pulse Charging Challenge. Today, we're going to see how long it takes to replenish a 2022 Hyundai Ioniq 5, and you won't believe this vehicle's performance. I mean, I sure didn't. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna see how long it takes to DC fast charge an Ioniq 5, taking the vehicle from basically zero to totally full. We'll also look at how the charging rate changes as the battery fills up, and we'll compare this crossover to an all-wheel drive BZ4X, though, I'll be honest, there's absolutely no comparison because this Hyundai destroys the Toyota. Of course, that's something you'd already know if you watched our DC fast charging video on the BZ4X. Now, if you haven't, go do that, but just not right this second. But first, some details on the particular model we're testing. This Ionic 5 features all-wheel drive and a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack that provides a respectable EPA estimated range of 256 miles. With two motors, one at each end, this vehicle is a potent performer, packing heat in the form of 320 horsepower and 446 pound-feet of torque. Yeah, it's plenty quick. We also have a full video review of this vehicle, complete with an important safety reminder about why you shouldn't store your groceries on the floor. For some reason, still unsure why. So check that out, or if you're watching this feature before that one is published, I don't know what you're doing, I don't have a time machine. If that's the case though, subscribe to the EV Pulse YouTube channel so you can give it a watch whenever it does go live. Okay, that's enough shameless self-promotion for now at least. The Ionic 5's lithium-ion polymer battery supports both 400 and 800 volt charging. Now, despite marketing claims from Hyundai that it is rated at 350 kilowatts, this pack should be able to absorb energy at around a maximum of 235 kilowatts, which to be honest is still a super impressive performance. Using a 240 volt level two charger like you'd have in your garage at home, the Ionic 5 should be able to go from a 10% state of charge to full in a Hyundai estimated six hours and 43 minutes. Pretty standard stuff. Hook this hatchback-like crossover to a 150 kilowatt DC fast charger, however, and the automaker claims it should go from 10% to 80% in around 25 minutes. Finally, if you tap into a DC fast charger that provides more than 250 kilowatts, the Ionic 5 ought to complete the same 10 to 80 sprint in just 18 minutes, which is so fast, you practically expect to hear a sonic boom. Now, before we see how well those claims hold up in the real world, a few words, or rather a lot of words, about our testing methodology for the EV Pulse Charging Challenge. Feel free to skip ahead to the next chapter if you'd rather just see the graphs, but I suggest you stick with me for just a minute. First, we deplete a vehicle's battery to between 5 and 10%, a range where motorists on a long trip would want to juice up. And sometimes we go even lower to 0%, which is really sphincter puckering. Ask me how I know, or don't, preferably. We do all this by driving on the highway for at least 30 minutes to make sure the vehicle's battery pack is nice and warm because warm batteries absorb energy quicker. Next, we find a DC fast charger that can deliver at least as many kilowatts of power as the vehicle can accept, and then we plug in and start charging. In this case, we're hooking to an Electrify America unit that cranks out 350 kilowatts of juice. Now, along the way, we monitor the progress all the way to 100% so afterwards, we can analyze the full charging curve. No need to thank us, we do it for you. Finally, a few important notes. One, in some vehicles, if you enter a fast charging station as a destination in the navigation system, it automatically starts preconditioning, that is, warming the battery pack up so it charges optimally. If the vehicle we're testing offers this feature, we use it. Point number two, although we're completists, in normal use, drivers only want to DC fast charge to about 80% because after that point, the charging rate almost always dramatically decreases, meaning the last 20% takes way longer to get, though it shouldn't be a big deal with this Hyundai. And point number three, DC fast charging is best used on long road trips. If you own an EV, most of the time, you're probably going to be juicing up at home using a slower, but much more convenient and affordable level two charger. 
Of course, outdoor temperatures matter too, as batteries don't absorb energy as quickly in the cold. During our Ionic 5 testing, the weather was a bit cooler than usual, with an average temperature of 52 degrees Fahrenheit in Novi, Michigan. So with all of that out of the way, let's get to the juicy data. Flash frame of Brent Spiner. To recharge the Ionic 5, we hit up our local Electrify America station with about 1% of range left in the battery. Yeah, we cut it pretty close. Then we hooked this vehicle to a mighty 350 kilowatt charger and let her rip, and rip it did. The charging rate started at about 147 kilowatts, which is a stellar figure, but it only got better. Once the battery hit about a 24% state of charge, the rate crested the 200 kilowatt threshold. Then the charging hovered in the mid 220 range until we saw our peak rate. The Ionic 5 topped out at a thundering 231 kilowatts, which was achieved at approximately a 53% state of charge. After the Hyundai peaked, its charging rate dropped precipitously, but remained in the high 170s, gradually trending downward until we hit an 80% state of charge, then disaster. No, no, the car didn't catch on fire, nor did some disgruntled Hummer EV driver try to ram us out of the way in order to access that coveted 350 kilowatt outlet. Instead, the charger just stopped and we have no idea why. This is the reason there's a small gap in our graph. The Electrify America station kept giving us a cryptic error message, which is not at all helpful. Like, just tell us what the problem is. We reached out to EA, but haven't heard back yet. Naturally, we tried restarting the charging process and we switched to the unit's other cable, but nothing worked. Ultimately, we moved the Ionic 5 over to a neighboring 150 kilowatt charger, which allowed us to complete the test. Hooked to that new power source, the charging rate was super slow, dragging along mostly in the single digit range, but finally the taps opened again when the battery hit an 88% state of charge, with the kilowatts jumping to an impressive 63. From there, the rate gradually decreased until we hit 100%. Comparing the Ionic 5 to that all-wheel drive BZ4X shows Hyundai's superiority, Overall, the Toyota's recharging rate is extremely consistent. It's just consistently not good. The Ionic's peak rate was about 2.7 times faster than the maximum charging speed we saw with the BZ4X. That Toyota topped out at a feeble 86 kilowatts, not even close to its advertised maximum of 100. To state the obvious, the Hyundai delivers a vastly better experience because it charges at a far, far, far quicker rate. As for time on the charger, let's see how long it took the Ionic 5 to go from basically empty to totally full. All told, the vehicle absorbed around 77 kilowatt hours of electricity, which required about 50 minutes of charging time. Now that figure does not include our futzing around with the charger that decided to quit. At 43 cents per kilowatt hour, that electricity cost us a not unreasonable $35.10, including taxes. And How's that sound in a world with five plus dollar per gallon gasoline? Additionally, if we recharge at home, the dollar per kilowatt hour rate is typically far lower so you can save even more money. Next, looking at the all important 10 to 80% window, did the Ionic 5 live up to Hyundai's bold claims? Well, again, the automaker says it should only take 18 minutes to charge that much. Well, according to our testing, yes, it appears Hyundai is dead accurate because it took exactly 18 minutes for this Ionic 5 to go from 10 to 80. In more relevant terms, it gained about 180 EPA rated miles of range in less than 20 minutes. And to go from 80%, about 205 miles, to a fully topped off 256 miles took around 30 minutes longer. As mentioned earlier, and as you can clearly see in this graph, the charging rate does plummet past the 80% mark, but still, it took less than an hour to fully replenish the Ionic 5. That's an absolutely stellar performance. In comparison, we had the BZ4X hooked up to the same charger for more than three hours, at which point we gave up with the battery at just a 95% state of charge. Overlaying the charts from both vehicles once again illustrates the Ionic 5's DC fast charging superiority. Yeah, that's kind of embarrassing for Toyota. 
And what's embarrassing for the United States is our public charging infrastructure. Perhaps with the exception of the West Coast and, of course, Tesla's industry-leading supercharger network, there aren't enough chargers, and the ones that are out there often don't work. Electrify America is probably the best non-Tesla network around, and it's, to be polite, not that great. I've never had a seamless experience before, whether it's the charger erroring out, the card reader not working, or the smartphone app not being able to communicate with the charger. Something always seems to go wrong. And unfortunately for me, it's never been a stress-free experience. And I know plenty of you will weigh in to the contrary, but at this point, error-free charging tends to be the exception, not the norm. Things are improving and they will get better in the future, but DC fast charging is still an issue not just in the number of locations, but the quality of service as well. But enough complaining. The Ionic 5 is an amazing EV hands down, one of the best you can buy today. It looks great with that angular 1980s inspired styling. The interior is premium, it drives well, and the vehicle's DC fast charging capability is among the best in the business. So if you want an EV and you live in one of the states Hyundai offers the Ionic 5, Get one. You won't be disappointed, I promise you. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this installment of the EV Pulse Charging Challenge. Please like and subscribe so we can keep bringing you more features like this one. Oh, and feel free to leave a comment or five down below. Go ahead, don't be timorous.